Have you ever wanted to know how you can create arcs in Blender? In today's video, we're going to be creating arcs that can emit from whatever object you please. We'll make it looping and we'll do it in one particular way and maybe in a future video, we'll go through a completely different way of doing it. We've done something slightly similar in this video over here that you definitely should check out if you haven't already. The link will be in the top right corner, but we'll be testing out slightly different methods of creating the effect. So if you watch that video, pause right now and try to create this render by yourself and then come back to the tutorial to check out a other ways of creating it or how you can possibly create it yourself. So let's start the tutorial. We'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag up to create a new window and then change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Now we can press this new button to add in a new geometry node tree and then we'll start working on the different elements that we require. So we'll select our group input and press X to delete it and then press shift A and search for a cube. Now the reason why we're deleting the default cube is because this particular cube has controls of the size directly within a single node and we don't have to use another transform geometry node. So for now, we'll change the scale on all of the axes to something like 5 and this is going to act as our basis to create a bunch of points through which the arcs will get attracted to. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh to volume node because only then will you be able to distribute points within the volume. So press shift A and search for a distribute points in volume node and plug that in. Now, if you actually expand this drop down over here and switch on timings, you can see that it takes 74 milliseconds just to calculate this and as you add in more and more nodes, this timing is going to get heavily affected by whatever this time is. So since we're not really using the volume that much, we can actually reduce the voxel size to something like 2 and that way it now takes only 15 milliseconds and the overall time becomes much faster, which I think is a huge improvement without really compromising the spatial randomness in our distribute points and volume nodes. So once you have these points, we want to actually move them around randomly. To do that, we'll press shift A and search for a set position node and we'll move it using a similar manner that we've used in many places before. We'll just search for a noise texture and we're going to use this in the offset. However, to loop it later on, we're going to have to change the noise texture to 4D. Press Shift D and bring it here. Press Shift D and search for a mix node. Change it from float to vector and plug this color in here, this color in there and the result into the offset. Now it's still going to shift up by 0.5 units on all of the axes. So to fix that, we can just press Shift A and search for another vector math node. Change it from add to subtract and subtract 0.5 on each of the axes. Now we'll deal with the animation later on. So for now, we can move on to adding in an object from which the arcs will emit. You can use whatever object you want. And in fact, you can create a separate object and drag that in using an object info node, but I'll create the object within our geometry nodes for now. So I'm going to use an icosphere and I'll just increase the subdivisions to something like five and then press shift A and search for a distribute points on basis node because these points are from which the actual electric arcs will be produced. So now we can plug the mesh into the mesh of the distribute points on faces, but to see it, we'll plug this into the geometry. Now we want both the icosphere to be present along with these points. So we'll press shift and search for a joint geometry node and plug that in right there and take this right into the joint geometry over here. Next, we want to instance some curves onto each of these points. So we'll just shift this to the side, press shift and search for an instance on points node. And for the instance, we'll press shift and search for a curve line and plug that right in. Now we need to get the rotation to be pointed correctly on each of these normals. And we can't use the method that we used in the previous video because the number of points that are being created in this distribute points on faces node is not going to correspond with the index values of the icosphere that we have here. So the distribute points on faces node comes with its own rotation output over here that automatically rotates it and aligns it to the normals. So we can just plug that into the rotation and instantly it gets aligned to the normals, which is exactly what we want. Next, we need these tips to actually get attached to the points that we had created over here. In order to do that, we can press shift A and search for a set position node and plug that in. And we'll use the same method as before, which is using the tip selection. We press shift A and search for a curve tip node and select only the tips. And we have to actually give it the right position to get the position again, just like last time, we could sample the position for every single one of these points that we had over here. So we can just plug that in to see the points and we could get the positions, sample it, and then use that as the offset for our set position. But the problem with that is that the indices start from one particular side and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all of them would get connected to those indices in order. So whatever corresponds to index one for these curves that you just created will go and get connected to index number one of the points. Then curve number two gets connected to index number two. And we don't really want that. We want them to get snapped to the closest 
point that it has and hence we can press shift a and search for a geometry proximity node and plug this geometry into the target then use this position output to control the position of our set position so we can detach these points from our join geometry node and take this position and plug it right into the position of this set position node now we'll realize that nothing really is happening and that's because we've instanced these curves onto the points so these curves are all instances to actually change individual instances we need to realize them so we press shift and search for a realize instance node and plug that in next all of these suddenly disappear and that's because in our geometry proximity node we've chosen it to choose the closest face but points don't have any faces we have to change this from point from faces to points and that way every single one of these lines gets attached to the nearest point which is exactly what we want and if we go to our noise texture and change the noise they actually jiggle around as we want so for now we'll keep that back at zero and we'll see that there's not too much randomness added into where these points are going to they're going directly to the nearest neighbor every single time and that causes quite a bit of uniformity to change that up again we can play around with this source position for the geometry proximity so we'll just move everything up a little bit more and then press shift a and search for a noise texture and plug that into the source position but we don't want solely the noise texture we want its original position with the noise texture added in so we can press shift and search for a vector math node and plug that in and for the first vector instead of using the noise texture we'll use the position node and plug that in so now we are adding a little bit of noise to the position and that's why we get this but as usual noise on average brings everything by 0.5 units so we have to move everything down by 0.5 units so we press shift a and search for another vector math node and this time we subtract it by 0.5 that brings everything back to the center and we get a little bit of randomness added in but it's not a lot because the noise texture gives an output value between 0 and 1 and sometimes we want it to be way more than 1 hence we can press shift a and search for a vector math node yet again and we're going to multiply it by the same number on all three of the axes so instead of add or multiply we can actually use scale because that multiplies a single value on all of the axes now if you change this the randomness increases as you can clearly see the clumping is reducing so this is fairly random enough maybe a scale of 1.5 will suffice for what i want and now we can actually play around with each of the curves to make them more like lightning or electricity to do that we're gonna go ahead and just use another set position node we press shift a and search for a set position node plug that in and this time we're going to play with the offset using a noise texture so we'll press shift a and search for a noise texture and plug that right into the offset now we'll see that everything moves again by 0.5 units but we don't get any individual arcs being created or shapes being created and each line remains as a single line and that's because right now each curve has only two points to increase the number of points we can press shift a and search for a resample curve node and plug that in just before the set position and now we have the curves actually getting deformed but everything moved by 0.5 units we have to bring that back so again we can search for a vector math node change it from add to subtract and subtract 0.5 or we can just take one of the nodes that we already created over here press shift d and bring that right here and plug it in which brings it back next i'm going to actually increase the count from 10 to maybe 20 and reduce the scale to 1.5 because i think that just looks a little better and more like actual lightning curves so we can move on to the next part which is actually giving it some thickness because if you switch off the overlays you see absolutely nothing to give it thickness we need to convert it into a mesh so we can press shift a and search for a curve to mesh node and plug that in after the set position but for this node we require a profile curve so we can search for a curve circle node and and plug the curve into the profile curve now it's going to be way too fat so we're going to reduce the radius to maybe 0.005 and that just makes it really thin and you can actually see it along with that i'm just going to fill caps so that if by chance we can see one that's pointing directly towards the camera it's not like an empty hole now for my original icosphere i want to actually shade it smooth because you can clearly see each of the faces over here so i'll press shift and search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in and finally we can set material for each of them so press shift and search for a set material node plug that in here and press shift D and bring that in here and for the icosphere we'll just give it the default material then we'll go to the material properties tab over here press the plus to add in a new material and press this new button to create a new material then we'll change this material to arcs and the original material we can change to sphere and then just choose arcs on the second set material over here with that we can finally set all of our defaults and start the animation so for our defaults we'll go to our render properties switch on ambient occlusion bloom screen space reflections and for our bloom we're 
just going to reduce the intensity to 0.02 and I'm going to clamp it down at 4 as well. Then I'm going to go to my output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and an end frame of 150 so that it's a 5 second long animation. Then my output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format is FFmpeg video with an encoding container changed to MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Then I can increase the timeline by a little bit, zoom into the original noise textures and mix node that we created. You can keep this as a vector or as a color, it won't make too much of a difference. For now, maybe I'll just use color because we are mixing color data. However, we're going to reduce the factor down to zero initially. Press back to go to frame number zero, hover over the W value and tap I, hover over the factor and tap I. Then for the second noise texture, we'll change the W value to two and then press I. Then we'll go to frame 150, change this W value to zero and press I, and then change this factor all the way to one and press I, and then change this to the negative of what the second noise texture was. So that would be minus two and then press I. Then select all three of the nodes by pressing shift and select to get all of them selected. Go to the timeline down here, press A to make sure all the keyframes are selected, then press T linear so that it's a smooth loop. Now, if you actually play the animation, you should be able to see these curves moving around and jiggling like electricity. The first thing is it's a little bit slow. So to see the actual frame rate, you can switch on overlays and see that it's dropped down to like eight frames per second. I'll change the frame rate playback from every frame to frame dropping so that we can see a realistic speed. And secondly, each of these strands have quite a lot of resolution on the curve circle. We don't need it to be this high. So I can actually reduce it all the way down to three and it would still look the exact same. And that way the frame rate should go up significantly. Now we can switch off show overlays and this is what we have as of now. So you can always play around with the distribution by changing the density of the points and volume. You can always change around the density on the distribute points on faces node as well to get even more arcs. You can play around with the length of the arc by playing with the curve line length over here. So the Z value, if I change it to 0.5, the arcs will be smaller on average, which I think might look a little better because arcs generally aren't that long. And lastly, I feel like the motion is not large enough or random enough to be real arcs. To fix that, on this set position node, just after the subtract, we can actually scale it up even more. So this scale node that you had over here, you can press Shift D and bring that in here and just scale it by a large number, maybe five. And now you should see much more random motion occurring. Maybe I'll reduce it to three as well. So this looks good enough in my opinion. So this is what we're going to be using. To make sure that it's looping, just go to frame 150 and then hop to frame zero and you should see no difference. And I don't, which means it's perfectly looping. And now we can move on to the texturing. For the texturing, we're going to change our viewport display from solid to rendered so that we can see the changes. And initially we'll at least hide the light for the time being. Then we'll change our geometry node editor to the shader editor. And we already have sphere selected. So we'll play around with that. We'll just increase the metallicness all the way to one and I'll reduce the roughness to 0.3. That way we'll get nice reflections of these arcs. Then we'll go to our material properties over here and just change this from sphere to arcs. For the arcs, I'm going to go all the way down and just change the shadow mode from opaque to none. And then I'll select the principal BSDF over here and press X to delete it. Then press shift A and search for an emission node and I'll plug that into the surface. Now, remember we already clamped the bloom values so we can actually change the strength to whatever high value we want without getting the bloom to start overpowering the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the strength to maybe 500 and that makes the arcs really bright and white which makes them look more like electricity then i'll go to the world properties over here and just reduce the color down to black so that the bloom is even more effective and this is what we have and if you play the animation this is what it looks like now we can actually set up the scene and deal with our background so for the scene we'll just select our camera press alt g to clear location alt r to clear rotation then press r x 90 and then g y and bring it back and press zero to go into our camera view and that looks good enough of course you can always grab it and move it further back or closer if you feel like by pressing gy and that seems all right next i need some background so i'll press shift a and search for a mesh plane then press rx 90 and then scale it up till it's way beyond my camera view and then press gy and just move it back so that the entire sphere with their arcs are seen and now to actually see the back plane i'm going to switch on the light which will also create some nice reflections on our cube but i'll go to the light properties over here by selecting it and then coming to this tab and i'll just change the color to a more bluish color and reducing the power down to about 300 for now then i'll select the camera go down to the viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one after which i'll select the light again press gz bring it down a bit the x to just move it even further to the right and then i'll press shift d x and move it to the other side as well you can always look at the actual values here and give them the right values from here so i'll just make this minus 8.5 and i'll select the original light and make it 8.5 after which i can select the original plane add in a new material for the background and start off by changing the base color a bit lower increasing the metallicness all the way to one 
and for the roughness i'll press shift a and search for a voronoi texture and press shift a and search for a color ramp so that we get more control plug the distance into the factor and currently using euclidean you'll get circles but i want squares so i'll change it to shebi sheb and then plug this color into the roughness now we can just increase the scale quite a bit and reduce the randomness down to zero so that they're perfect squares and just play around with the scale till you get something that you like so maybe i'll go with 50 and i'll just go to the color ramp and bring the white in a bit and change it from a complete white to maybe a value of 0.7 then i'll take the black bring it in and change it from a value of 0 to a value of 0.4 so that's actually all there is to creating this particular animation the last thing that you have to do is press render animation thank you so much for watching till the end the watch time definitely helps me out if you have any questions do comment them down below i'll respond to as many of them for as long as i can i release videos every single day so there's a lot of content present on my channel that's definitely worth checking out to just get some inspirations to create your own animations or to help learn blender and various techniques that you can apply in your various projects until the next video comes out you can keep creating and don't forget to stay creative